In the late 1800s and early 1900s, Russian scientist Ivan Pavlov and his team were conducting research on the digestive process in dogs when they noticed changes in the timing and rate of salivation of these animals. Pavlov later developed a theory based on this observation that is well known as classical conditioning. So what is classical conditioning? Pavlov noticed that when a hungry dog encountered meat, it would start salivating. Because this reaction happened naturally, without any prior training, the meat was labeled as an unconditioned stimulus. Likewise, the act of salivating itself, which occurred without any deliberate training or experience, was termed an unconditioned response. An unconditioned stimulus is one that elicits a response automatically, without any prior training or conditioning. An unconditioned response, on the other hand, is an automatic response to a stimulus without the need for any training or prior experience. While the meat induces salivation naturally, even without prior experience or training, other stimuli like the sound of a bell do not elicit salivation. Since these stimuli do not impact the specific response, they are classified as neutral stimuli. When an initially neutral stimulus, such as the ringing of the bell, is paired with an unconditioned stimulus, the neutral stimulus acquires the ability to elicit a response similar to that caused by the unconditioned stimulus, thereby becoming a conditioned stimulus. The main point here is to enable the neutral stimulus to evoke a response similar to that produced by the unconditioned stimulus. Following repeated presentations of the bell and the meat simultaneously, the dog begins to salivate merely upon hearing the bell. This phenomenon is known as classical conditioning. Such classical conditioning experiments demonstrate the impact of learning on behavior. Classical conditioning has several educational implications that can prove beneficial in the realm of teaching and learning. For instance, it can be utilized to establish positive associations with learning by associating enjoyable activities or rewards with learning tasks. It can be used as well as to eradicate undesirable behaviors by consistently linking undesirable behavior with an unpleasant stimulus. Indeed, Classical conditioning plays a significant role in various facets of the classroom, including its application for classroom behavior management, establishment of class routines, and even the educational games that students play in the classroom.